ADSB. Is it time to panic yet? We're discussing that today in the hangar. I used to be a well respected member of the ADA Asia community, and then I started flying a Cirrus, and that changed. Oh, well, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden, I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Christy Wong at Pilot Christy. Today, I've got Bill Goble, and coming soon to a YouTube near you is his upcoming uh, channel, Hangar Rats. Hangar Rats. Hangar Rats. All right. Well, Bill, we're here today to talk about ADSB. Good. Is Good. it time to panic yet? Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty okay. Much. So if you well, haven't gotten ADSB yeah. yet, and that's 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 a big thing. Um, I've been asked to talk for the last several years, and what I've been kind of preaching is. Uh, Hold off, don't have to make a decision, hold off. And about four or five months ago, um, pretty much told everyone now's the time. And the, the big thing is, is if, if you have an aircraft that is revenue dependent on your livelihood, Long Warrior, you need to equip now. Because after January 2020, January 1, uh, you must have ADSB in rural airspace. If you have, if your aircraft was certified with an electrical system. Well, first of all, I want to assure everybody that the Wong Warrior is in fact ADSB. Right. So it's it's a thing. It's a real deal. Um, the crux of the situation is they put all of the food and alcohol in class airspace. So you really want to have ADSB. That's that's a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in all seriousness, um, ADSB is a good thing. It's um, there's there's the, what we call ads out and ads in. Ads out. I equate it to real simple, I'll give you just the cliff notes, real simple, ADSB is sort of like your lights on your aircraft, okay? okay. There's all sorts of regulations for your strobe lights and uh, your navigation lights, or all of position that, lights, the position yeah, lights, yeah. there's all sorts of regulations for that. And there's all sorts of regulations for ADS out. ADS out is basically, think of it as a beacon on your aircraft so that the ATC system and towers can see you and they know exactly where you are. There's really no, there's very few regulations for the lights inside your aircraft, other than it needs to light the instruments and your dome light can't be your, your instrument light. That's about it. I mean, the older part 23. What it says, and that's the same thing with ads in, but the lights, which lights will keep you alive when you're flying? The outside lights or the inside lights? The inside lights. Which ads will keep you alive? Ads in. And that's where it, it paints all the other traffic that you can't see to your kneeboard, to your glass and your cockpit and all that. That's really important. Um, if I asked you to see a white Cessna three miles at 10 o'clock climbing, I can't see a white semi-truck three miles away, <laughs> yeah. okay? And in, on a white gray day like we have in Texas, it's really hard. But on ads B, you've got that information coming in. So that's why you really want to do equip. Uh, it's, it's a great thing. Um, and again, you went to Oshkosh. If anyone flew in Oshkosh, there's some planes out there. Oh, just a little. Yeah, just a little. So it's a kind of a good thing. Biggest thing is wants versus needs. Do you need ads B? If you're out outside of rural airspace, you're out in the country, you, you're, you're a crop duster, 100 miles away from any city, you probably don't need ads B. If you fly the aircraft around your little country airport out in the, uh, out in the, out in the middle of nowhere, you probably don't need uh, ads B. If you fly into any metropolitan city that has you know class B, C, D airports, you need ads B. Well, and uh, for those like country folks out flying around as well, I mean, just know that you're not going to be able to get into a controlled airspace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you have to fly it to go get maintenance, for example, exactly. you're stuck yeah. if you don't have ADSB. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's that's a deal. Budget is a big concern on a lot of folks. Um, how much do I want to spend? Well, if I have a $15,000 airplane or a $100,000 airplane, that may make the differences uh, worthwhile whether I'm what I'm going to so get. So what out. are the options then? The options are pretty much anywhere from a fifteen, eighteen hundred dollar ads, uh, ads be out, which just says this is where I am. It's like the little wingtip ones. The little wingtip or ones. I think I saw one at Osh yeah, was like one. the tail light. There's a tail. Okay. There's uh, some that uh, some that are buried in the in the aircraft. Um, so it's going to be um, anywhere from fifteen to say twenty five hundred dollars installed for a basic minimum system. Okay. Uh, but again, that lets you fly anywhere you want to. As far as adds in information, that does not include that. That would be more. So you've got to think about that. There are ways to do that with Stratus, uh, Stratux, other other types of units if you Garmin want to, does one. Garmin does yeah. one. So you can do you can do that uh, on a budget. 
And again, uh, do, do it as, as much or as little as you want. But that's really what you want at the end of the day. Integration is a big thing, is how integrated do I want this into my aircraft? Do I just want it scabbed on on the tail? Or do I want it into my avionics suite? Um, so there's systems that uh, are, you know, they're, they're inbred in with the uh, transponder systems and all that. It matches, it plays. Again, Garmin, uh, mm -hmm. the, the big king out there, all that stuff. But again, integration costs you money and that kind of stuff. Um, kind of to your point of, is it time to panic? Yeah, um, because right now it's the bandwidth issue isn't really the equipment. A lot of the equipment's available. Um, I just was uh, received some stuff from one of my uh, suppliers, Apario. They said there's no backlog. That you can, so you can get it, you can get your equipment. I can get my equipment from the supplier, that supplier, within a week, UPS. But it's the labor. It's the labor that your okay. shops, you're going to find all your shops are probably bandwidth as far as getting people on the aircraft to put it in. So if you really need ads B by January 1, 2020, then you need to get on a shop tomorrow or as soon as this airs, <laughs> okay. okay? So you need to, get, you need to do that, real important. Um, and then there's other things that are gonna, gonna impact your installation as to how fast they can do it is, do you have a WASP GPS navigator now? If you do, that's an antenna installation they don't have to do. They can just pick that signal up off your WASP navigator. Um, again, to put an antenna in, you've got to have some, somebody do sheet metal work, this, that, and the other thing. Um, so it just depends on how quick the installation can be. Most of the times, it's simple as, it's as simple as changing out a transponder. The hardest part is getting shop time to get in there. So gotcha. that's, that's really going to be your real limiter. So um, there's other things that you want to think about. Uh, again, if you haven't been to your avionics shop, you should have been, shame on you. But um, antennas is a, is a deal, and panel space, that's going to determine what kind of system you have. I have a little Cessna 150. I have no panel space. Yeah. I have no panel space. So that, that's something I've got to really think about. Um, a lot of folks say, well, you can just add another gauge. Actually, I can't. I don't have the space. There's none. Um, do I have a WAS navigator? It's got to be a WAS navigator. If you have an old Garmin or an old whatever um, GPS, what they call TSO-129, that doesn't cut it. It's got to be a WAS navigator. If you have a non-WAS 430, it's got to be a WAS navigator. So there's some other costs that you're going to see that may end up tapping your, your pocketbook. Things you should have been, I've been telling you to think about for the last two years. Yeah. But again, if you wait to the last minute, it only takes a minute, right? So not so much. Um, encoder, sometimes the encoder, you might have to change out the encoder. A lot, most of them, it's not an issue. So. Yes. Now, the bottom line is, ads is a good thing. Don't be afraid of it. A lot of people are, you know, oh, it's the government, it's 1984. Big Brother's watching me. Big Brother's kind of watching. Thing, yeah. And I'll tell you right now, it's a concern of mine. If I'm flying at 5.30 in the morning and I hit a thermal and there's nobody else in the Class B airspace and I end up skimming the bottom of that 2,000 foot floor, does that mean it's going to be a traffic camera? I don't know. The FAA said they're not going to do that, but they're going to have X, Y, and Z to three meter accuracy of knowing exactly where you are at all times. So we're going to hopefully they do good things with it. But uh, again, it's a good thing. It's, it's a good thing for what you're doing. How, how are you doing? How do you, do you notice any big difference on your aircraft? You're an ads, you're an ads flyer. Is it a, it's a good thing, right? Uh, I, I mean, I like, I'll be honest with you, I prefer it when other people have ADSB around me so that I can see them, yeah. you know, through, yeah. the, through my ADSB in. I can see the traffic around me, uh, but other than that, I can't, I can't tell a difference necessarily. Exactly. I, I don't know the difference, you know, with the out. And all I, is, I just know when I see other traffic around me that has out. And again, that's where some folks are, are uh, have a little consternation. What's it like? Actually, it, you know what? I, I, I take that back. There have been a couple of times where myself and another ADSB equipped airplane, we were coming toward each other and we both saw each other. I, we had to have seen each other on GPS and we both made a correct, you know, correct yeah. turn. And so in that sense, yes, I'm glad I had ADSB out because that way he could see me, I could see him, mm -hmm. and we yeah. were able to avoid any sort of airspace yeah, proximity it's, issues. It's, again, it's situational awareness. It's Absolutely. what you what you never had before. Yeah. So now it's really actually quite hard to get lost. Um, but, and now it's, yeah. it's again, it's, uh, it's nice to see. Or if you're hearing Tower talking to someone, Tracon talking to someone, 
now you know where they are, whether exactly. they're a fast mover, whether they're real high. No, that's perfect actually, because then I, I actually, you know, I'm able to look at them and see what the ground speed is. Yep. So I know, for example, if it's like, you know, 90 knots, it's probably going to be an aircraft, you know, similar to mine or, or yours or something. But if it's an aircraft that's going 150 knots, okay, I've got less time to react or, or what have you. So I, I do, I think it's a good thing. I personally. Yeah, I think it's, it's really good. Until thing. I have a reason <laughs> not to. <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah, and there's two different, uh, kind, of a, kind of a nerd thing, there's two different frequencies, 978 and, and 1090. Both of those, whether it's a, what they call an extended squitter or 978 UAT, both of those go to the ground, get retransmitted on the other frequency, so everybody sees everybody. Okay, just because you have one kind, I have a different kind. I see you, you see me as it's going through the ground on the signals. So it's all re, that's the rebroadcast part of ads. Okay. So that's, that's kind of very cool. And again, it's innocuous as turn, just if you fly around with your nav lights on, you don't know it. Right. And it, that's what ads But then other people know Then other people know to read a landing light. So right. that's what ads be is to you flying. You have no idea it's on. It's just nothing but, I think it's, it's a great thing. Um, again, the FA's position is, you'll, and you'll hear folks say, well, I think they're going to extend the deadline. And the FA's position is, we told you 10 years ago, 10 years ago, that you had to have it. What part of, right. what part of that did you not get? So I don't think you're going to see any extension of it. Back when transponders, back when the earth cooled and transponders first came online, they had they what, called, they had what, blah, they had what they called a Part 91 exemption. And they took everybody under the Mode C veil at the Class B air place, mm -hmm. air, uh, airspaces and they exempted them. And then they slowly, as the infrastructure came up, they eliminated that exemption. The, all the infrastructure has been in place 10 years. So you're not going to see any exemption. I don't believe if I had to bet a dollar, you're not going to see any extension, which says the traffic cameras are rolling January 1. Get her done. Understood. Okay, so is it time to panic? Yeah, if you haven't planned. All right. And it's and flying's all about planning, right? You heard it from the man <laughs> himself. Well, thank you so much Thanks. for Thanks coming for and explaining it. All right, you guys, you heard it from Bill. If you haven't done your ADSB yet, it's time to do it now, unless you want to be grounded on January 1. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please uh, like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, we'll see you in the hangar.